Thank you for coming to the school committee tonight. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Very good. Okay, so to get started, anybody want to address the school committee tonight under public comment? No? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on then to uh, our readout from the schools. We only have one tonight? <laughs> you have the spotlight then. There you go. Thank you. All right, so on Thursday, January 26th at Plymouth South, there was a tech expo, and this included programs from both North and South. Seventh and eighth graders were able to attend from both PSMS and PCIS in order to learn about the variety of programs offered at both schools. And then later that night, we had our introduction to high school for eighth graders and their parents. And then also recently, we're proud to announce that Maddie Sessler recently had her Division I College Athletic Recognition Ceremony. She has broken many records for track and field at Plymouth South and will continue her career next year at Columbia. Over the past several weeks, numerous English classrooms have been holding poetry out loud competitions. The overall school competition recently concluded and we would like to congratulate our winners. In third place was senior Peter Duncan, Second place went to another senior, McKenna Rivera Concanon, and the overall winner moving on to the regional competition was freshman Melina Manick. Congratulations to all involved. The district-wide high school science fair will be conducted tomorrow at Plymouth South High School. Many students have been working very hard on their projects all year and are excited to showcase their work. Also tomorrow is the annual Advanced Placement Breakfast. This ceremony will begin at 8 a.m. and students, please remember to wear your AP t-shirts. Once again, the Plymouth Public School community is teaming up with the South Shore Community Action Council in this year's third annual Empty Bulls Project to help fight against hunger in our community. Join us on February 9th from 5 to 7 in our free ceramic workshops. Come make a bowl or plate. Your creations help to raise much needed funds to replenish the local food pantries in the area. The annual Skills USA District Dinner will take place on Monday, February 13th at 6 p.m. Congratulations to all qualified students. <coughs> and lastly, the PSHS and PNHS AP Info Night will be held on Thursday, February 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. at PNHS. If any students are interested in taking an AP course for the 2017 to 2018 academic year, you're encouraged to come. Very good, thank you, Brianna. Um, old business, I don't, I think the only thing most of our stuff are long term going to be kept open, uh, but the uh, last item we can now close the retreat um, since we had the retreat this past weekend. Unless anybody has any other updates or anything, I don't think there's anything that we were waiting any kind of current update. <coughs> so that would be old business. Does anybody have any new business they'd like to add? No, new business. Then uh, reports and proposals from Dr. Maestas. Yes, uh, good evening everyone. I have a few items to report on uh, tonight. Um, just want to give you an update on Madam Elementary. I know uh, earlier this year we had some, uh, some damage from a fire suppression sprinkler that um, displaced some classrooms that, that took uh, some time to get complete. It, it, things are, are done and, and things are back to normal. So I uh, just want to um, reach out to uh, Principal Frayne and the Manimate staff and the school community at large for all of their support to, to get this complete. But it was it was really handled without a hitch and uh, a, a great deal of effort from everyone. The kids just responded wonderfully to, to all the adjustments that were made. Um, I was notified today at my meeting at Town Hall with department heads that on February 15th, I will be presenting to the Finance Committee the information regarding the fields. So I'll be presenting the, a similar presentation that I um, um, provided to the Board of Selectmen uh, on, on the 15th. That'll be at 7 p.m. And um, shortly after that, we will um, schedule um, a meeting to 
once again present information to the Board of Selectmen with the final numbers for the project. We're anticipating that that, that meeting will be March uh, 6th, which is a Tuesday, okay? Typical Board of Selectmen meeting night. So that's tentative. We'll see how things go. We met with the uh, uh, town manager uh, Reggie this morning and, and we were able to, uh, to walk through uh, some dates. So um, you can pencil um, the March 6th date in. The 15th is a definite, all right? And um, the next Voyager magazine will be out in the next couple of weeks, so we'll, we'll get you to have that uh, as soon as it comes out, and we'll email email a link to you. And um, just want to reiterate the uh, science fair tomorrow. I know some of you may be judging, so that's an important day for our uh, science department and for our students that look forward to your participation and uh, your judging of their projects. So tomorrow would be a, a really important day for everybody. So that's all I have for uh, tonight, Mr. Beckley, and back to you. Very good, thank you. Yeah, how many people <coughs> are gonna judge? Anybody gonna judge tomorrow? I know, yeah. Mrs. No, Burgess. I Mrs. Burgess, I think. Well, actually, I've had a, a dramatic change in my schedule tomorrow, so I'm now available to judge if they need a judge. <laughs> so. I will pass that on, I think they will take care. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Definitely want you. Mm. Uh, Dr. Sorens, you want me to send you an email in the morning? Would you please? Just to let you know if, uh, okay, information. Please, okay. thank you very much, no problem. <coughs> now tonight we have quite a few retirements. Yes, we do. Mrs. Fry. Um, we have five retirements tonight. Um, Karen Baker, a moderate special needs teacher from Plymouth South High School. Um, Sylvia Bunnell, an elementary teacher from South Elementary School. Joanne Denatolis, a nurse educator from South Middle School. Mary Humbert, a math teacher and department head from Plymouth North High School. And Kenneth Pereira, a technical studies um, electrical teacher and department head from Plymouth South High School. A lot of years. M Ms. Badger. On behalf of the Plymouth School Committee, I'd like to thank these individuals for their combined 137 years of service <laughs> to the district and wish them a happy retirement. We haven't had one of those in a little bit, no, that kind of number. Uh, it's a massive <laughs> number tonight. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah. Taking a big hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go to correspondence, if we don't mind, I see Isabel's joined us for North. You want to? <laughs> Uh, so we recently began our cap and gown sales. They will run through February 1st uh, to February 17th, and orders are placed in Ms. Allen's room before or after school for $25, uh, made out to the PNHS SAF. And then we had our first annual Poetry Out Loud competition, which was very successful. It was on a Wednesday, February 1st, and we had many finalists uh, of all grades, but then our winner was Ariana Bramas, who is a junior, so she'll be going to regionals on, in Cape Cod, so we'd like to wish Ariana luck. And then our uh, girls and boys winter track team was named the Patriot League champions recently. And then our math team also finished their season with a uh, meet win. Uh, it was uh, placing them first in their division, and they've been undefeated for two straight years, so we'd like to congratulate them for all of their hard work and dedication. And our science fair will be tomorrow, February 7th, at Plymouth South High School. And registration begins at 3, and it's open to the public from 7 to 7.30. And then winners will continue on to the regional science fair at Bridgewater. And then we have our first, after, first ever Fashion is Forever fashion show, which is at Plymouth North High School on February uh, 9th at 7. And tickets are $5 at all lunches and $8 at the door, and is run by uh, DACA students. So we're excited to have that. And then uh, winter break begins on Monday, February 20th, and then students return on Monday, February 27th. Um, we had a boys track sprint medley relay uh, winner of Ray De Silva, Josh Pastana, Ben Andre, and Nick McKenna, Mick, Nick McNamee, uh, and they qualified for nationals this March. And then we have 22 students traveling to Costa Rica for nine days during February break for a service learning trip. Very good, thank you. I like your shirt. Thanks. <laughs> Good. Federal Furnace, we have our school improvement plan tonight from Federal F Furnace. Dr. Maestas, would you like to tee that yes, up? Yes, uh, tonight we have Federal Furnace Elementary School and Principal Camaro is here with her uh, school council to uh, provide information regarding their updated school improvement plan. So welcome to school committee. <coughs> And we moved along nicely on the agenda, so you didn't have to ahead. sit too long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. See that? We did that just great. for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you can talk a long time. <laughs> no, no. 20 minutes should be plenty. <laughs> 
Thank you, Mr. Begley, and thank you, school committee, for having us. I wanted to introduce the members of our school council that uh, were able to be here tonight. So I have three parents with us here. I have uh, Louise Pisano right next to me, who is our co-chair, and then Amy Tenberg and Andrea Holmes. All three are Federal Furnace parents, and thank you very much to those uh, school, I mean, school council members here with us tonight, and also those who were unable to be with us. So as an overview uh, of this plan, I want to let you know that there's not much of a dramatic change from our plans in the past, even though this is a new two-year plan. So uh, this brief presentation will highlight the key focus areas for the 2017-2019 plan, demonstrating how they link to previous plans and some of the highlights of our efforts towards achieving these goals um, that are outlined specifically in the plan that I, I, I know that you have. So this plan was informed by many sources, including data available publicly on the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education's website, surveys conducted of our staff over the past year, and a parent survey that was conducted in December of 2016. That survey actually was quite successful. Uh, when we sat here two years ago presenting our plan, uh, one of our concerns was that we didn't have a lot of participation in the survey and we over doubled our parent participation. That being said, we're um, educators, not scientists or statisticians, so um, there could have been some duplications because we did provide a paper option as well as an online option and we were more concerned about getting responses than making sure that they were individual responses. So we're not going to split hairs over a percentage point here or there, but um, it was quite favorable. Um, all of the results, I think with the exception of one question, had 80% or higher um, satisfaction rate as evidenced by answers such as agree or strongly agree. So that's um, a really important piece uh, to think about looking forward at this, at this plan, that it was informed by parents. Um, at least 40% of the community participated in that survey. So that was, that was really great. So, um, our first goal is about being a safe and supportive school. And if you are at school committee meetings or watch them, you've heard us at Federal Furnace talk a little bit about this. Uh, we have been participating in a research study for two years through the American Institute of Research, AIR, and the Trauma and Learning Policy Initiative, TLPI. So we will talk about this briefly for the benefit of people who may not know that much about it. Um, it's important to remember that being a safe and supportive school is an approach, and it's certainly not a promise um, concerning everything that ever happens at the school, though we work diligently to reduce incidents of things that are not safe and supportive. So we're in the second year of this research study, so it will be concluding in June, but we are really hopeful that our work in this area, you can go to the next slide, um, will continue. So that's what our first goal is about. So for many years, our first goal is about being safe and supportive. In the 2015-2017 plan, uh, we talked a lot about uh, positive behavior and expectations um, for students. And what we actually ended up doing, we wanted to expand our program of positive behavior supports, and we did that through participating in this study, we, we decided to take a more global look at that and looking at behavior from the perspective of why do students often have negative behaviors because they're not feeling safe or supported at school. So participating in this study has really been helpful. And as we transition out of the grant program, we or not the grant program, the research study, we want to um, continue that work. So we've had a, a subcommittee of, of staff working on that. We want to transition that committee to be an advisory so that major decisions at the school are made looking at um, the safe and supportive framework that has been outlined for us. So that being said, um, we can go forward. Thank you very much. Um, some of the things that we've done already and that we want to improve are looking at um, not only our classroom times, that's been done in the past. Um, the first year of the plan, the team really worked on opportunities for students to be better regulated in classrooms and places for students to go when they aren't regulated and are experiencing some behavioral difficulties. And so that was all put in place for the beginning of the 2016-17 school year. 
And then we noticed that some of our non-structured times, such as recess and bus and lunch, um, there were still a lot of challenges. So we've started to look at those through our committee. And one of the things we did was revisit our recess and provide many options. So you can see in these pictures, not only are there traditional outdoor options for our students, but there, there are board games, there's coloring materials, there's building materials. And that really helps our kids to engage in constructive play. A lot of research does show that students need help learning how to play as they're not outdoors um, alone as much as they were in years past. So. It's helpful in um, providing a safe environment so students then come back in from recess with less conflicts and are able to transition back into the classroom more productively. So moving on to our, our second goal is that we definitely want to focus on providing a, um, a rigorous curriculum. So in the past, um, we had two goals. The last plan had two goals that were somewhat similar to this. One was about integrating more technology into classrooms, and one was about diversifying assessment and uh, using targeted instruction for students. So we feel that we made quite a bit of progress, in particular on the technology goal. Um, and Mr. Pisano is going to talk a little bit about that, but we are going to continue this in a little bit of a different way. Yeah, it's interesting. And as part of this survey, one of the things we asked uh, parents to do was to kind of write uh, uh, various programs and initiatives, um, not necessarily like do you like them or dislike them, but just, you know, in order of, you know, um, you know, rank, you know, priority order. And it's funny, technology uh, in the, the uh, questions came out as something that uh, parents are very happy with. But it also came out as, as the one the one program or initiative they want to see more of. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where everything we've done they're happy with, but we're clearly uh, not uh, done there. So it's one of things where we've made people hungry, and now they're saying, "Yeah, give us more of it." Mm -hmm. And so they're they're at the same time satisfied and dissatisfied because they want to see uh, more of it. So what we've seen is now um, that we have a lot of uh, baseline technology. It's now more of a steady state operations thing where you just have to uh, continue to evolve it. Get Get more of it make sure that teachers know how to use it um, but by all means doesn't mean you know uh, stop the investment mm -hmm. it means you know people are happy with it they want to see more of it and we just have to keep you know keep evolving it thank you very much so the second piece of that um, is our universal design inclusion and differentiation so I believe that um, Mrs. Tenberg wanted to say a little bit about universal design for learning. Yeah, um, universal design for learning is basically, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, based on, on neurological science. And the general gist is the idea that kids learn more and retain more when they are presented with material multiple times through multiple avenues using multiple techniques. And um, not only does it give them the opportunity to really absorb and retain, but it also um, is very inclusive and it gives students who might um, learn in a more non-traditional way or have strengths that maybe weren't really played to using older methods an opportunity um, to have that chance to shine where they might not be a child who uh, really soars on writing an essay, maybe when it comes time to build an engineering project, that's right up their alley. Um, and we got a lot of feedback from teachers as well that suggested that um, doing those kinds of lessons in their classrooms were the ones that got real positive feedback from the kids, were the ones that carried over into multiple years where they were saying, hey, remember when we did that? Um, and therefore, they were retaining the information. Um, so what we're hoping to do is continue to support the teachers um, and inform the parents as well on how we can keep these kinds of lessons being a really regular thing and, and a more frequent thing in the classroom so that kids who are hands-on learners, kids who learn really well with, with music, with art, all those kinds of things um, have an opportunity to do so and that it gets them achieving higher as a result. Thank you very much. 
So on this slide, you can see a few of the things that we have done as uh, integrating universal design was a piece of the last plan as well. Uh, there's some great projects up there. There's uh, an archaeological dig simulation down in the right-hand corner. There's um, something that was recently in the Voyager Express email, um, the Massachusetts giant traveling map where the kids are learning their geography by standing on the map and doing all kinds of great activities that are available in that kit on the lower right hand corner of that slide. There's technology, there's active reading strategies with um, sticky notes, there's oral presentation. So what we want to do, just like um, Mrs. Tenberg said, is to continue this and make sure that uh, we're supporting our teachers in implementing strategies such as this. Great transition into our next goal because it really is about supporting staff, encouraging innovation, and also um, collaboration. Because being a teacher in the 21st century is not an easy thing. Trying to provide a safe and supportive environment, rigorous curriculum, everything is changing. Uh, one of the only things that is constant is change. So um, using a lot of these strategies on the right-hand side, peer observation, Innovation, uh, collaboration, uh, committees, and highlighting our teachers' success, developing experts are some of the things that we want to do through this plan. So one of the things that we've already started uh, was to develop some really diverse uh, committees in the building of staff. So during our staff meeting time, we've we found topics of interest to the teachers. They're in the educational literature right now, a lot of hot topics up there between outdoor education, homework, technology, um, how we use space in schools, parent engagement, community building, physical health and well-being. And we asked teachers which committee they wanted to be on. And we uh, surveyed them, and we were able to put them all on one of their top three of all of those committees while also really making sure that those committees are diverse so that they're uh, people cross grade levels, cross disciplines, special educators working with regular educators, specialists working with classroom teachers, our therapists are involved. And um, this work just began late fall, early winter. But people are engaged, they're excited, um, and they're happy to be contributing to moving these ideas um, or new ideas in each of these areas forward in the building. So that's really exciting and we hope to continue that. And our final goal, I told you we wouldn't take too long, um, is about expanding family and community partnerships. So um, I'm going to turn that over to Mrs. Holmes to say a little bit about that. Hi. So um, for me, this goal was pretty important um, to want families to feel welcome in the school. And um, when I read the survey and all the results, I mean, the percentage was very high of people that were satisfied with the communication that they're receiving from the school. So of course, you want to build upon that. Um, so I just wanted to read that um, that it actually increased 81% of the survey respondents agreed or strongly agreed that federal fairness forms effective partnerships with families and community. Fewer than 5% of the respondents disagreed or strongly disagreed with the statement. So at this point, um, we don't really need to improve communication. We want to obviously keep it up, but we want to use the communication relationships that we have and build upon them. So um, one piece to that is that we obviously would love more families and parents to volunteer, you know, as they can. Um, one of the things that the survey said um, when looking at the results was, you know, I'm not sure, you know, how I can help at the school or, you know, where I might fit in. So providing um, opportunities for more families um, and parents to volunteer is important. Um, and then obviously to do that, you know, you want to diversify. So some parents obviously, you know, may not be comfortable in the classroom doing support that way, but maybe they're, you know, good at yoga and they can offer an extracurricular yoga activity for the students. Or maybe, you know, they're great at technology and they can help with the newsletter and do things in that way. Um, 
So I think that, you know, just trying to strengthen the community, partnerships with families is very important. It's only going to enhance um, the school as a whole, you know, help the students and keep them, you know, at school, wanting to come for activities and, you know, the parents wanting to come in, see what's going on and support that. Um, and then I don't know if you want to take over first. Thank you very much. So yeah, just a couple more words on that. Our previous plan had a goal about um, using our outdoor spaces effectively for education, and that really would not have been possible without community and family partnerships. So here we see some pictures um, resulting from those partnerships. We have our partnership with Terra Cura, and we do have community gardens beginning to grow. Um, on the right, we have our students who were working with uh, professionals from the South Shore Natural Science Center, so we were able to benefit from that. We have also worked a little bit um, with the Southeastern Pine Barrens Association, looking at our grounds and trying to um, keep them sound ecologically, but also teaching our students about the unique environment that we're in. So building on that, we decided we weren't going to focus solely on our grounds and our outdoor education, but focusing on those community partnerships that made that possible and trying to expand that into other areas. I also did want to highlight one other community partnership that we maintain and are uh, very pleased with is our partnership with uh, South Bay Community Services. So our final goal is just about seeking and uh, all those community partnerships, family partnerships for volunteering and enhancing the opportunities that we're able to provide for our students. And once again, thank you for having us. Thank you to our school council and our school community for supporting us. Do you have any questions? Very good. Anybody have any questions or comments? Mr. Morgan. Um, good presentation. I like it was short and concise. <laughs> and I like the fact that you had last um, school plans goals next to the, the new goals. And it was easy to read and, you know, um, so I want to commend you for that. Thank you. Very good. And I was going to say the same thing. Excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thanks Have again. See you next year. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Now we have an update from our uh, program director for our food services, Dr. Maestas. Yes, today we have uh, Patrick Van Cotten. I think he's, uh, he's probably still, he probably drove over from South Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And we have Patty Callahan, who's uh, the assistant food service director, uh, here to provide information regarding our, our food service program in Plymouth. I think uh, I was reviewing uh, the presentation this morning and it's uh, alarming the amount of uh, meals we serve in a year. Uh, when you serve it one day at a time or one meal at a time, it, it, when you look at it holistically, I think it's it's pretty significant. So with that said, Mr. Begley, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Van Cott. Great, thank you very much, and thank you for having us this evening. Um, my, I'm Patrick Van Cott, Food Service Director, and this is Patty Callahan, Assistant Food Service Director. Um, whenever I stutter, can't finish a sentence, <laughs> Patty's there to finish it for me, so. Um, we, um, on our update, we have 12 schools still. Uh, we feed 7,501 plus students breakfast and lunch in our meal periods. Our free and reduced lunch percentage is at 32.68, and it's fluctuating daily. Um, we get approximately six, seven, or eight uh, applications with multiple members on each application um, every day. Uh, that's We serve in the area of 653,000 lunches and 180,000 breakfast per year. We currently have 68 total employees, one secretary, bookkeeper, two van drivers, four managers, eight team leaders, 51 cafeteria workers, and ourselves. And I have to say thank you very much to the, the time and effort and dedication that all our workers do have. Every time I go into a school, they're doing something different, they're doing something creative, um, and they all do work very, very hard, and they, they know all the kids by their first names. It's, it's amazing to sit and watch the, uh, the dedication that they do have. Um, 
we're not just a simplistic uh, breakfast and lunch uh, food service. We do a lot of uh, different programs. One is, uh, especially here at PCIS, we never really close down. They make it, we make it very difficult to, to get a good cleaning during the uh, summer months uh, because we have a summer food service that uh, serves meals out of here. And we serve lunch to four different sites. Uh, that's uh, 18,192 meals this past summer, and that's up from 13,000 last year. And what we did was <coughs> we didn't just serve lunch. We started serving breakfast, snack periods. Um, we said, well, we're there anyways. Let's start doing them. And, and there was a, a big need for that at the different locations. Uh, one of the locations is Camp Clark. Uh, Boys and Girls Club uh, here at PCIS and Hedge Elementary School is an open site where anyone can show up and get a free meal during the uh, summer months. Uh, we also completed our first full year under contract with um, Council on Aging uh, doing five days a week year-round uh, the congregate meal um, and that's averaging about 40-45 meals per day. Uh, we also do the uh, alternative learning program at North High School, uh, Pilgrim Academy. Uh, we do all the food service at Memorial Hall. We're constantly catering all different events all over the place, and we do PEC, the Plymouth Early Childhood Center. Our lunch choices are continually moving and uh, grooving with the times so we at least moving try and grooving <laughs> <laughs> trying anyways uh, to stay current uh, in our elementary schools we have uh, hot meal assorted sandwiches and soups secondary um, schools were a, a lot more diverse we have uh, the bistro salad sandwiches pre-made and to go our most popular is the grab and goes because the kids don't have to wait in line to to have them all made for them um, and then we do the World's Fair, which is like the uh, menu that you see in the newspaper for the hot meal of the day. And then uh, the grill, where we get to experiment with different uh, items, uh, burgers, chicken sandwiches, hot dogs. We do meatloaf or pulled pork and things like that, a lot of home-cooked meals. Uh, new this year, uh, we brokered a contract with uh, Papa Gino's, and it was amazing to see the millions of dollars that they spent in marketing and we get to use that from just the popularity brand and how many more meals that we did serve we are serving currently to the kids it's died down a little bit with the secondary levels because they always want change but the elementary school kids really really love it um, new this year as well we're in the process right now of working with um, Plymouth North High School DECA project, and I told them I was going to say their names here. Uh, Taylor Shaughnessy and Jocelyn Bailey um, came up with an idea to do an allergy free offerings line, and they want it to be district wide as well, at least on the secondary levels. Um, and they came up with a really cute logo, um, and it's Beehive Free. So a little B in there. Um, and they've done a lot of research, and we're going to do a lot of taste testing. And uh, they've, uh, they just sent it to us this morning. I didn't even get a chance to really peruse it, but they were very, very intricate in all the items that they have uh, picked out. So I'm going to have to do some real, real uh, buying this week to, to get them some uh, <laughs> good items to taste. Um, and we're also doing a tomato sauce project that we'll report on in the um, future, um, but it has to do with the gardens to school, and we're going to make enough sauce to uh, feed the kids for a long time with uh, homegrown stuff here. I don't want to spoil the whole surprise on that because it will probably be a presentation of the future. Um, this past year we had... Uh, we got lucky and drew a short straw, uh, and we had our child nutrition uh, program review, and it was split into two different items. One was uh, via through the nutrition bill, and we're on a three-year cycle uh, for the reviews. So in the administrative review, they sent uh, five days, they sent three people. Um, I uploaded 25 documents and over 200 pages of worksheets and policies uh, for them to look at before they even walked on site. Um, and we did very, very well uh, in, in that part of it. Uh, the resource management comprehensive review was three days on site, and they're looking at all the financials. And in their corrective action plan for us, they found out that our we were charging too little uh, for the students. And what it is, it's paid lunch equity, where you have to do a weighted average in your 
free meals, your reduced meals, and they and they weigh it out, and it has to eat, come close to what you're char getting charged for a uh, free meal or reimbursement, which is three dollars and twenty two cents. Um, so we have to go up in price uh, this next year. It's a it's a mandate for us. Um, they said that our revenues on the non-program foods were very, very diverse and working well. Um, our labor percentage and our insurance uh, was very, very high. Our student trends, so it's not all doom and gloom, um, are starting to come back up again. Uh, we, we mentioned last year and the year prior too that we were kind of on a roller coaster and we were we kept waiting for that part that you hit bottom, and it seemed like last year was the uh, was the year, uh, fiscal year 15 and 16. Uh, so at 16, we were serving about 3,400 meals, uh, 3,492 uh, per day. And this year, to date, this past month, we just served uh, 3,628 meals. So things are back on the rise again, be it that the kids are – you know, liking what we're serving, number one, or they're getting used to the regulations, I think is more like it. Um, does that so, include breakfast, that number? No, that does not. Um, that's down at the bottom here, that if we do a report on that. Our a la carte sales are back up too, because we, um, are, they have a lot more A-list items that are available. Uh, they actually have ice cream that's available now. It's on the yes, it's this big, but it's at least something. Um, <laughs> it's still ice cream. One table. Technically, I believe. I haven't read the package closely. Um, the breakfast participation, as Dr. Sorza was saying, has gone up 100 meals per day. Uh, plus, we are currently serving over 1,000 breakfasts per day, um, which is remarkable. A lot of the kids uh, will use this as their sometimes their meal period. They'll eat breakfast and they'll be fine throughout the day and then they'll eat like an early or a late lunch when they get home, something along those lines. Um, but it, we're, we, I'm remarkable that it's gone up about 100, 150 every single year and it's become such a popular me uh, That's good. meal time. Can I just ask a question on that, just to clear? Sure. So I, I, I've heard comments on the community about the school departments now offering breakfast to kids right they the kids pay for that it's 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 a mandate and 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 it seems to be a benefit not only to um, us as an educational institution that we know kids are getting something to eat but it's also the parents have some level of comfort that they can get something to eat at school correct absolutely a, a lot of the and I, I hear this every time I talk to anyone in the nursing departments that a lot of the visits that they have there they're referring them back to us to give them breakfast a lot of it is my stomach is killing me it hurts me and you're hungry Mm. And that's the bottom line. And once you feed feed the children, then uh, they're they're more alert, they're happier, the whole bit, um, and, then, and they stop with the excuses, et cetera, and get back to class and uh, start learning again. Um, but it was I, it, when I came here. I think we served breakfast at one school, if I'm not mistaken, Hedge, yep. and uh, the the need. Was there or not explored to be there on Cold Spring as well? It's correct, um, and we immediately started at all the schools, and it started really, really slow, um, but it started, you know, gaining some ground in our break-even point for labor and serving the breakfast was like about 40 per per school. And now some of the elementary schools, it's absolutely amazing to walk into and, and you see it's, it's how they start their day. It's, it's something popular and good that these kids do. Mm -hmm. Some of them all sit in their little groups of friends and things like that. So it's, it's really neat to see how they do it. Um, but yes, it's become a, it is a necessary thing uh, where a lot of the schools are schools of need because a certain percentage of your free and reduced uh, lunch, but it's a very, very important part of the day as well. Well, yeah. so, a, free, a free student eats a free breakfast also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for saying that, too. Thank you. Um, expenses. Uh, food is risen a little bit uh, to about $1.1 million. Um, healthy ingredients cost more. That's just the bottom line. We have embraced that. Uh, labor has gone up a little bit uh, to $1.13 million uh, with the yearly cost of living increases. And... The big, one of the big things that was pointed out to us in our uh, financial review was our health insurance. Um, and, and, and a, you know, the elephant in the room, it, it just sits out there. Um, and we're fortunate enough right now, especially this year, 
to have the resurgence of the popularity of lunch again because we're coming very, very close to breaking even so far this year, knock on wood, you know, barring any disasters. Um, but, you know, fiscal year 16 was just $358,000, 17 is going to be $385,000, and then 18 is going to be $412,000. Um, we need to sell 149,818 meals at $2.75 just to pay for the health insurance alone. That doesn't count food cost, labor, anything else included in there. That's an equivalent of 41 operating days. So the first two months of operation that we have in September and October are all to pay for the health insurance, basically. It's a, a daunting task to stare at that every single year. So we, we look at it in small increments monthly is how we do it. Um, more expenses. Um, our other expenses total approximately $150,000, and it's fuel, meals tax, uniforms, vehicle repairs, software for our POS system, license renewals, equipment repairs, equipment replacement, office supplies, and printing costs. We had uh, complete f uh, freezer compression failure over at uh, South Middle School this year. We had to uh, replace the boiler at South High School went but we don't care because, <laughs> because the, the school is going to be torn down. So it made it a lot further than I thought it was going to make. I kept looking at it and then yeah. closing the door on it. Uh, I would close it too. I, I, yeah. yeah. I, uh, the door's shut. So it's it shut down. Very good. Um, but uh, thank you to uh, Culinary uh, is allowing us to use uh, one of their uh, kettles to help us out when we need to uh, make our mass quantities of food that we do. Um, and also South Middle School is helping out too as well. Um, They've got a lot of equipment over there. Uh, then office supplies and printing costs. Uh, along with the aging buildings comes aging equipment. So uh, it's just a thing that we've come to accept, and uh, I budget for it every single year. And I hope I was under five minutes. <laughs> that, was, that was very good. Anybody have any questions or comments? Mr. Morgan? Um, could I have a report? I know last year you came before us, and I believe we implemented a policy for restriction of peanut butter. So I'm wondering how that's went over and how that's going. It, it's funny. Whenever you, you, you introduce something shocking as that, you know, peanut butter, what am I going to do? That's all it is. At first, at first <laughs> they're not happy. They were not happy. Um, we replaced um, some of the schools with sun butter. Um, and they're fine with it. Okay. They're, they're as fine as fine can be. And I, I always uh, don't talk about it, and then it'll just go away, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but it, no one has really uh, put up any okay. alarms or anything. That, and they uh, can have it at the secondary schools, correct? You just have peanut-free zones. Exactly. Thank you. Dr. Sorensen? I, I'm going to go through everybody to Dr. Maestas, because I think it's important to point out, and maybe you can comment on it, that this program is not a budget item. Yeah. The taxpayers have no participation in this part of the program. Could you elaborate, please? You know, Dr. Sorensen, uh, I was just thinking that when, when Patrick was presenting that I'm not sure how many people in the community uh, take note that when we present our budget, uh, food services and in attendance because their budget is actually self uh, generated so this program is a hundred percent dependent on food sales so they have to be very creative in the menu that to be very creative in what they have for a la carte items that to be very creative in labor costs because Patrick and Patty manage the entire department so they can make money to pay the bills so when Patrick says that they're running in, in, in the black or running in the red, they are really running in the red or black, depending on how, they, how well they do uh, within the food service program. So it is a model. There aren't very many food service programs in the Commonwealth or even around the country that are running independent and cover all their expenses. Uh, that's including health care. Some um, municipalities, uh, the majority of them uh, that run their own food service, um, the uh, revenues to pay their bills and insurance, insurance is, is typically pitched in by the community. Uh, a municipality might kick in uh, for, for health care costs. In Plymouth, 
their program is running 100% health care uh, and all labor costs and food costs, 100% by what they bring in every day with, uh, with fees, uh, with um, lunch prices, and um, any subsidies we get for um, food that we get from government um, allocations and so on. Very good. That's important to point out. Yes, Ms. Ms. Hunt. Um, I know I've I know we've talked about this before, and I've asked before. But what about, um, or maybe you're doing more now than you were in the past after school for the high schools, like a grab and go type of thing, or we we haven't explored. Well, we have the explored it mostly. Unfortunately, it's a a cost is always associated with the labor. Yeah. Um, and. It becomes very, very unique with the majority of our labor force is at 3.5 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and once we cross the threshold into a four hour mark, then they're a full time employee and we'd have to offer them uh, health, health insurance. insurance. Yeah. And it always gets, uh, you know, we, you know, looking at the health insurance increments of, of the increase right now, it's, it's just devastating to, to look at it. And that's what it would have. And, and, you know, perhaps, you know, to have a part-time person, um, you know, do that after school. But we, you have to also understand, too, that we do all our own subs and everything, too. Mm. And right now there's a severe shortage um, of finding people, um, good, reliable people. And it's because it's such a unique, um, you know, hey, do you want to serve some kids food, you know? <laughs> and, you know and that becomes very difficult to find someone that's reliable to come in, so... Just another follow-up to that, because um, I know at South the kids have no place to go, but at North you see them every day walking to Mary Lou's or walking to Dunkin' Donuts or even down to the corner store. What if it was a pre-packaged item that you could possibly even get, like booster club volunteers, if it's for if it's geared towards more athletes? Like, what if the parents were to volunteer? I mean, I know that there's rules and regulations, you know, for the health department, but if it was a pre-packaged here's some, you know, give me some money and here's a sandwich or here's a muffin or whatever. It's just something to tie them over. These kids are there from 7 o'clock in Long the morning. Hours, sometimes, right. I mean, sometimes when my daughter has a late chair practice, she doesn't get home until after 8 o'clock at night. So you caught my attention because you said free labor, right? Well, you know, I'm sure, <laughs> to be yeah. honest with you, to be honest with you, at the high school level, there is a core group of volunteers in this town, and when they hit high school, there's nothing for them to do. And I know that parents do look for volunteer op opportunities at that level, um, and it's not always as easy of a thing for them to do at this level because of the kids or whatever. I don't know. I mean, even if you just tried it for a little while, I, I have heard from a lot of parents that they wish that there was something available to the kids after school. We'll try anything. I remember talking about the construction workers last year. We tried to serve them. Oh, uh, yeah. And they wouldn't come down because it was so hot. So they just stayed <laughs> stayed place. And they would they go, maybe we'll get something tomorrow. They'd be yelling down from the building. <laughs> <laughs> but we tried it. Yeah. You know, we did a two-week trial period, so we'll try anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, rather than seeing them all, I mean, you see them all yeah, walking down the street. You see revenue sources. I always talk about pockets of kids and mm -hmm. pockets of people, and, and, and we'll go after them. So thank you. That's, that's yeah. great. Just that's, an idea. All I'm sure ideas are good. the Booster Club would be happy to at least some brainstorm boosters. it with you. Yeah. Oh, so you hear that, Patty? <laughs> Patty, you have a good relationship with them. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I actually want to go back to the previous point that we were talking about. You know, we, we, we have to present our budget, as we know, to the Finance Committee and to the Board of Selectmen and to town meeting. And we often re reference the, uh, the solar panels as a way that we have taken steps to save the town money. You can see where I'm going with this, but because this is not a budget item, Finance Committee sits over there during our presentation, and I don't think they have any, they, they, they don't realize that this whole program run, runs without taxpayer participation. All I'm saying is it, it's an item that we need to weave into our presentations in the future to make the point that we're not always asking for everything. So I, I, with that said, Dr. Sorensen, I think uh, Patty and Pat, Patrick you know where this included is going. our budget presentation <laughs> next year. <laughs> I just night. got out of it, didn't I? <laughs> you did. So we want to ride your coattails as well. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> At least we don't put you last anymore. That's oh, okay. we'll see. Okay, uh, that's a deal then. <laughs> we'll ride your last, we'll move you up. Yes. <laughs> I also wanted to mention, too, I totally forgot that um, it's a brand new uh, program that just came out last week, believe it or not. It's called a sharing table. Um, and 
it's you know you have the rules and regulations that you have to walk through the point of sale with the specific components but if you have something that's pre-packaged or piece that is a piece of fruit or something that is already packaged and safe you can take that item even a milk if you wanted to and put it on a table a sharing table in the particular school and then other children can come if they're still hungry and, and use that the, good idea. the good items. Idea. I like that idea. So it's got to be approved uh, through the, the <clears throat> Board of Health, and I just, I'm just i going to write them a letter, and that's how you get approved. And we that's do it at Camp Clock in okay. the summertime. Yep. How does it go over? Great. So Fantastic. Is that a change that the state would allow you to do? Because I know before they wouldn't even just let us. Just like consider. last week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. They, they would not even let us take a fruit and... That's, that's they're really that's, loosening up. I'll that's, tell you. That's movement. <laughs> I think it really is. Maybe they're hearing that the trash cans are getting exactly. full. Right. Very right. heavy. Right. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's good. One question I had for you is on the meals tax. I, I'm surprised. Can you just explain that that it, how that's applicable to? Uh, Municipal sites. The meals tax is um, the percentage of money of any adult meal that gets paid. Um, we pay the meals tax on that, and we do a check through the town, and we pay directly to the state. And it's for it's all not for adult the meals that are bought, like adult teacher meals. meals. So yes, it's the teacher, teacher meals. It's the adults, right? It's interesting though that it's uh, taxing ourselves on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you. As always, a very good presentation. Thank now, you. you don't go anywhere because you're the next item, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and the next item is about the uh, school lunch program prices. Would you like me to elaborate on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, mandate, it's called a paid lunch equity. And um, it, as a result of our corrective action plan from the state, um, what, what they did is on the, on the cycle reviews, this, they started, or this was the second year of their reviews, and we were at the end of that cycle. So they had done probably 200 out of the 300 uh, schools in Massachusetts. And what they were finding is a lot of uh, programs, including ourselves, were funding a lot a large portion of the funding was coming from the free and reduced reimbursement. Uh, our district is approximately $1.1 million out of our uh, $2.8 million budget. So the paid part of that was not keeping up with the near $3.22 of the, the free part of that meal. And what they recommended is that we go up um, you have to go up in increments or you can just jump and go up the, the quarter, which I would prefer to do, um, rather than going up in nickels and dimes throughout the uh, you know, progression of the years. And that will take care of us for three years at least. So I would, I'd like to recommend that we go up um, from $275 uh, to $3 on the secondary levels and $2.50 up to $2.75 on the elementary school level. Ms. Badger? I know you explained to us on Saturday a little bit about area costs. Can you elaborate for those who might be watching about, like, this isn't that much you know we're not the most expensive school uh, uh, lunch that you can not have. by by a stretch um <clears throat> what it does is they're trying to make everybody equal um on an equal playing field and a lot of uh different communities charge a lot more for the meals um in in more affluence and then other communities like in boston um, worcester etc have a very very high percentage and they rely typically on 85% of their uh, costs are, are, are reimbursements. Um, and it's important that they find some sort of an equity between all the different things. And it, all the surrounding towns are being mandated as well as they get to them and start saying, no, you need to come up to this amount, you need to come up to this amount. And that amount is what I recommended. So we're, we are within reason of everybody else all around us, all the surrounding communities. 
Dr. Sorensen? Uh, in my business, we, we uh, for our patients, we, have, we get money from Medicare, and Medicare has very, very clear, structured rules that if we, don't, if we don't follow those rules exactly as Medicare wants us to follow them, we can lose Medicare payments for our patients. So does that apply here from free and reduced lunch if we don't yes, follow what they're saying? Yes, it does. Okay. Absolutely. When was the last time that we had an increase? Three years ago. Exactly three years, three years ago. ago, yeah. <laughs> So and if we don't if we don't do this increase, those funds are at risk. Absolutely. Right, I'll move the recommendation of administration that we in increase our prices as cited up there on the board. And do I have a second? Ms. Hunt seconds it. Any further discussion? Then please vote on the electronic school board. If to sink. Uh, I'm not there. Uh, I'm sorry, I was busy. It's okay. <laughs> you were listening. You're gonna have to mock me as yeah, a yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're un unanimous. Okay. On this one. Got it, Miss. Must be this seat. When you sit in this seat, you. Have to <laughs> 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 That's the jig. She don't want to swap with you next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and. Uh, Continue to try. And continue to try. I'm gonna move forward. Uh, I have to re I have to log back in. That's okay. So all right. Good. There we go. Okay, We're moving forward. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much you. for having Thank us. You. Did the Patriots play last night? Mm -hmm. huh? No, I can't <laughs> keep hearing things. Go <laughs> catch up on news. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Now we have the new school year calendar for 2017, 2018. Oh my gosh, already. <laughs> Next year. We'd like to take that. Dr. Campbell's oh, will uh, run through it. Dr. Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Begley. Um, tonight we have proposed calendar for the 2017, 2018 school year. It's hard to believe. Um, we've looked at this um, over the last number of weeks at central office and with our principals, coordinators, and directors and have some proposed dates for you this evening for your consideration. Uh, we're proposing to start grades 1 to 12 on August, uh, Wednesday, August 30th, and pre preschool and kindergarten students start in the following day on the 31st. Um, we then are proposing to have that four-day weekend, which we've done for the last number of years here in Plymouth, having the Labor Day weekend begin on that Friday and having obviously having uh, September 4th, which would be Labor Day, off, giving this, the, the parents and, and everyone the four-day weekend. That's been, um, anecdotally, we've had some, uh, a lot of support for that. Uh, first professional development in-service day would be Wednesday, September 20th, and I'm proposing a half day for that. Um, as you know, we have a full day professional development day in the contract now. This past year, it was on the National Election Day. We do not have one of those this coming school year. But we've thought about that long and hard and really wanted to try to tie that day with an existing long weekend to make it what we feel will be mm. less of a burden for families. So if they already have, a, if they already know that they're having a long weekend, why don't we tie it to an existing weekend rather than have another random day at another point in the year. So we're proposing to have the full day professional development day, which would be a non-school day on Friday, October 6th. Uh, Columbus Day is the 9th. Um, it, so um, just to point out some days, you can see the half day professional development day on Wednesday, October 18th. We also have one on November 15th. There is no school um, Friday, November 10th, as it would be um, Veterans Day observed. Thank you. We're also proposing a Thanksgiving recess and holiday on November 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Um, we have had school in the past for a half day on that Wednesday, but we find that that becomes um, a very um, 
well-traveled day, let's put it that way, for families. So it is probably the, the uh, largest travel day of the year, in fact, the, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So rather than have an abbreviated s school day, we propose, we're proposing to have the day off and just extend the year out on another day and, and make that day up on another day. So it would be a th essentially have a, th a, th a three-day uh, holiday there for Thanksgiving. In December, we have parent conferences, um, K-8, to uh, which is contractual, um, both Wednesday the 6th and 13th, having the holiday recess begin on a half day, Friday, December 22nd. Students returning on the 2nd after having um, Monday, January 1st off. Martin Luther King Day is the 15th. Our January in-service day would be Wednesday the 24th. And then as we reach February, it would be uh, Wednesday the 14th. We then our, our February recess break, winter recess break would be Monday the 19th through Friday the 23rd. Um, March, Wednesday, March 7th, our professional development release day for all grades. Um, the parent conferences, again, K to eight in March on Wednesday the 21st and Good Friday would be recognized. Uh, no school Friday the 30th of March. It's early this year, next year. Um, in April, the Professional Development Day would be Wednesday, April 11th, with the spring re recess beginning on April 16th and concluding on the 20th. May is a relatively light month in terms of days recognized. We have a, a release day proposed for professional development on Wednesday the 16th and Memorial Day on the 28th. Um, graduation happens to fall on the same date. It would be Saturday, June 2nd, 2018, which is the same, I believe, as this year, June 2nd. And the last day, with all this taken into consideration, um, pending any snow days, of course, would be Thursday, June 14th. Very good. A any questions? Tom? Just, a, just, just a comment. Uh, historically, uh, if you go back to the uh, 70s and 80s and early 90s, um, the day before Thanksgiving was a day off. <laughs> and then somewhere in the middle of 1990s, the school committee, with the recommendation of the administration, made it a half day. Okay. And so now we're, you're recommending that we go back to the day off, which I don't have a problem with. But the reason you're giving it, giving us is because this is almost like because students don't come because they travel, <coughs> therefore we'll give them the, we'll make it a day off. Is that what you're saying? And I'm thinking they're traveling because they say, oh, it's just a half day. We can miss a half day. If it were a whole day, I wonder if, if we would have such an attendance problem. Still comes hmm. hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's an interesting uh, question. I get notices when we uh, are over 10% uh, over in attendance. And pretty much every school on that day is at that threshold. So um, uh, it's, it's hard to say if they would stay. I mean, after I, I traveling to... I certainly would take your recommendation, but it seems to me that... So now what happens if they decide Tuesday what they want to travel? Are going to make that a half day? When does <laughs> but, this stop? When, you know? <laughs> right. Right. When I taught, I taught high school, and I, um, the school that I taught at uh, had a full day. And I remember I would drive to Virginia every... For 13 years in a row, I'd, we drove to Virginia. That's our closest family. And I would, one year to um, Stafford County, Virginia, it took me 16 hours. It's a normally an eight hour drive. But that day to drive, the later you go, and I think parents, they judge that. Um, if you're driving for family, it's, 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 a, tough, it's a tough day. But hey, that's, that is what it is. It's a good thing about living in Plymouth. <laughs> right. That's a good point. You have them come to you. Yeah. <laughs> come to you. Um, <laughs> that's right. Turkey. What are the other school districts around us doing? Um, a lot of the school districts around us are take the day off. Yeah. Well, I'm not crazy about it, but I'll certainly go along with everybody's thinking. <laughs> Any comments or anything? I think it, 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 being somebody who travels to the western part of the state with Thanksgiving, I, we usually leave after the kids get out of school on that Wednesday, and it's logistics-wise, it's a disaster. So for us to be able to be out there on a Tuesday night 
would be better um, personally. But I do see, you know, some parents send their kids to school for the half day, and if not, they have to travel. They just have to miss school. Mm -hmm. So it may alleviate some of that burden. As Dr. Campbell said, it's one of the heaviest travel volume days out of the season. So statistically, so I think it, it may make sense to alleviate the burden on some families to have the day. Just as sort of a uh, maybe a tongue in cheek, is now all these moms and dads who are preparing Thanksgiving dinner all day on Wednesday are going to have all the kids home. <laughs> <laughs> I see these parents might not want the kids home in the morning. <laughs> I am less cool for me, so. Sorry. I'm taking you to school to play. I apologize to school. Good news, bad Go news. Go to the playground at school. I need some time. <laughs> <laughs> Go outside. This is an action item, so yeah. do I have a motion? Yep. I move that we approve the calendar for 2017-2018 uh, school year. Second. Ms. Badger moved it. Ms. Ms. Tricelli uh, seconds it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, 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 <laughs> back to <laughs> Electronic School Board. It is so much easier to just ask it about. <laughs> what Can your we vote back is? up to the previous vote if you want me to vote, or is that impossible? Uh, we already were on moving on. Moved on. I mean, I can go and re-vote it if you. No, what do you sorry, think? Not that important. We just note it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One manual. Moving forward, we'll be we'll be all set. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. And that brings us to uh, out of town or overnight field trip item, Dr. Mayest. Yes, tonight we have an out of um, country field trip, and uh, this is um, this is the third year, I believe, that this is the trip. If you want to come on down, you can come on down. So Tara's here tonight. Uh, Mike Bastoni is here as well. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having us. I promise I won't cry this time like last time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is our third year. As Dr. Maestas just mentioned, we had a fabulous turnout last year with 20 students um, visiting El Castillo in Dominican Republic and earning 20 hours of community service, having f extraordinary bonds made with community members there. Mike and I are escorting 17 students in April to the same um, location, which we are extremely excited about. And I was actually really thinking that I might take a break next year, but I have had several students ask about the trip. So I decided to get an early jump on it and say, okay, if I, there's an interest, then I should probably move forward for next year and continue this extraordinary relationship that we've started down there. So we are here, nothing has really changed. The price is, um, I think, $50 more, but relatively the same, $28.50. Um, same location. Um, same community service, same 20 hours of community service. So um, I don't really have anything to add because I think last time I spilled my guts on the table. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you have questions, I'm, we're happy to answer them. But we're looking forward to this year and um, hopefully next year as well. Any questions? Comments? Very good. Then it's an action item. Ms. Badger? I move that we approve the field trip to Dominican Republic in April 2018. Do I have a second? A second. Mr. Triselli uh, seconds it. Any further question, discussion? Then please vote electronic school board. Very good. I'm going to have some background music while it's thinking. I know. <laughs> I know, right? The Jeopardy. Yeah. Jeopardy. I definitely need that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Sorry you had to wait so long have for fun. that. We should have put you first. Sorry about that. Oh, no, that's fine. It was a kind of interesting to see oh, everything cool. else. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Okay. And that brings us to funding activities. Does anybody have any questions or concerns about the uh, fundraisers in the report we have? Okay, seeing none. Then we have reports and proposals from committee members, and I know we have. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go right ahead, Mr. Morgan. Mine's going to be well. Okay, mine will be short. Um, 
Uh, last week, I attended two shows at PC at uh, North High School for PCIS, Lion King Jr., and they did such an excellent job. The the level of professionalism and talent and the costumes and everything is amazing. I went last year to Shrek Jr. Yeah. This year, I had a hyena in the show <laughs> in the family, so I went to both shows and said just one. But they do such an excellent job, and uh, they to be commended with the effort and the. Uh, and the, sh the, the show they both nights sold out so it was excellent very good very good and uh, Ms. Hunt I know you want to give us a feed out of your attending the conference yep um, so I have two things one one quick thing I wanted to mention today um, and I think the last time I was here I reported out on the activities of the Distinguished Visitors Committee and our trip to Japan um, that we're working on. I don't know if we have any updates as far as when the committee's meeting, but um, I did want to mention, and I forgot to mention it last time, that the DVC did um, vote on a, a policy, a part of the procedure. We're trying to steam, streamline this process so that every time a new person comes in and gets involved, we're not starting from square one. We're trying to make sure that we you know, have almost like a procedure manual with interviews and all that. And one thing that's come up several years in a row now is whether or not people that aren't part of the official delegation can actually attend and travel with the group even if they are paying their own way and the st distinguished visitors actually made a policy and I I thought I had the exact wording with me but um, and it's they they voted to not allow that while anyone can go to Shishigahama and anyone can contact them and travel on their own if it's an official trip we've we feel strongly that if people come on their own with the group it puts an unfair burden on our hosts as well as some um, conflict back home as far as you know who's in charge who's in the delegation they expect you know when they come here they have a certain hierarchy and you know we kind of roll out the red carpet for them and they do the same thing for us and if people are coming that aren't prepped and part of the delegation and you know know what we want to talk about when we're there then it just disrupts things so um, even if they pay for their own way, they can go, but they can't be an active participant in the participant in the activities, the housing situation, and the group tours. So I just want to mention that. Um, and then I wanted to report out on so this week, um, last week, I um, got to attend the Advocacy Institute for the National School Boards Association, and I thank you very much for allowing me to attend that. Um, I I really feel like I got an immense, uh, such a great amount of knowledge, and I, I really feel like it was a productive um, trip. I was the only Massachusetts school board member there that wasn't part of the state board. <laughs> So that's good and bad. Um, the good thing is the state board actually kind of took me under their wing and I got to uh, go on hill visits with them. I got to spend time with them and have meals with them. So it was really nice. I, so I, you know, I made some friends really quickly. Um, there were two activities while I was gone. I was gone for four days. Um, the first day, it was actually an equity symposium. It was a whole separate event, different attendees. Um, it was all about um, how to make schools equitable. It talked a lot about poverty. Um, and I have some materials that I can share with everybody, and I'm going to send everybody links to the PowerPoints. Um, it was just really, it was really good. It was really good to hear from what other states, other communities, even talking with school uh, committee members from our state. We were pretty much spread out all over the place. There were several from um, Western Mass, several from the Boston area, Cape Cod, just hearing everybody's take on, um, you know, what kind of pockets of poverty we have, what are school districts doing to recognize that, to try to make it more equitable. Um, given everything that's going on in Washington right now, it was just a really interesting conversation. So that was the first day. The second day, it was the actual Advocacy Institute. So we basically spent two days hearing from, we heard probably from about a total of maybe six senators while we were there from both sides of the aisle. Um, again, very interesting conversations. Um, we 
heard uh, a lot about the education sec uh, the nomination for the Secretary of Education uh, both sides um, you know we are with people from other states so here just hearing different opinions were, were really interesting <coughs> we had a keynote speaker who wrote um, who uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin, What's her Goodwin. Name? Goodwin. Um, and she writes a lot of historical books about presidents um, and she was great we got a, a chance to hear her speak um, and then the last day we actually went to Capitol Hill we heard from a few more senators while we were there we had like a, a reception in the afternoon but I actually um, partnered with a school board He's actually the National, uh, Massachusetts School Board President, and he is from the Cape. So we went to uh, Congressman Keating's office to, together, talked a lot about Plymouth, talked a lot about the good stuff that we're doing here. Um, and then we also met with uh, Representative Lynch's office. So um, it was just very productive. I gave you all, I, I don't know if I had enough for everybody. I have the National School Boards Association policy agenda. Um, which, just to give you a really quick, this is what they kind of prep us for and have us go in when we do meet with our, have our meetings. They kind of give us what to talk about. Um, and there's a couple of things. One is the child, this pad's gone, the Child Nutrition Act. That's in reauthorization right now. So they're working on that. One that I thought was really interesting to us, and it gave me an opportunity when we met with um, Congressman Keating, is the uh, CTE, the Carl Perkins Act. That seems to be in kind of a, a danger of having some funding cut. In, cut. It's in reauthorization. Um, it has a lot to do with college and career readiness and our technical programs. Um, another one is um, federal education investments, appropriations, and then the biggest topic of the of the weekend was school choice and charter schools and school vouchers and hearing the different opinions on that. And then Massachusetts kind of has its own <coughs> agenda that they go in and talk to, and I gave you guys a copy of that as well. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. I gave you the bird's eye view of it. Um, we pretty much worked from morning till night. Um, I, I actually jumped in a, a little protest while I was there too, so <laughs> that was kind of fun. We actually, Lamar Alexander was one of our um, speakers, and the school, um, Teacher, the uh, teachers union was out front of our hotel um, objecting to uh, the nominee for the Secretary of Education. So that's pretty much it. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but. Well, th this is great. This sounds like, um, you know, this is a, was a conference that mm -hmm. I'm glad. Yeah, it was definitely worth. I compare it to what I've done for other things, and I just. I think maybe I'm crazy that I really like this advocacy stuff, but to me it just seemed like everything that I did, you know, was worthwhile and it was, you know, wheels to the ground, it was working, it was talking, seeing results. Was, and you're building networks. And I recommend, I mean, next year I won't be eligible to go, but if somebody can go next year, I, I highly recommend it. They've been doing the Advocacy Institute for several years. This is only the second year of the Equity Symposium, but that was equally as good. And it's interesting, since you were the only non-MASC member mm -hmm. that attended, it seems like it's, so it's, doesn't, it's not on the radar of other school committees. Either. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot. I'm trying to, there were probably, probably about 500 eight. people there in total. <laughs> Which was nice because you could have more conversations more than when you go to session. something that has like 4,000 people. Right. But it was, it was definitely, um, I recommend, most of you know, I hope somebody. The national one, yeah. the big yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean, the national yeah. one's good too. I personally felt like I got more out of this one. Yeah. Um, and more I, focused, I hope somebody like. can go next year. Good. Very good. And you're going to send us the links? And yep, I have links, and I actually, I have with me, this is the, um, this is all about the equity symposium, so you guys can take this if you want. I've read through them. Here's a copy of our advocacy ad agenda, um, and I have all the PowerPoints for, they have an app now, so even if you don't go to the workshop, you get a PowerPoint about it. And, and just to give you a quick run, I went to one workshop that was on um, LGBTQ youth and how school committees are dealing with it. There's a, a, a case in the Supreme Court right now that affects us. Um, I went to uh, a couple of budget 
Um, and that was just scary. A um, couple of budget workshops. One of the workshops I went to was on just all of our policy items. Um, trying to think of what else. I, I, it was nonstop. Um, Speak for the minute. Are we good? Yeah. So it's good. Very good. Thank you for going for us. Thank you and for letting me. Do we have any other reports, alumni updates, or anything like that? We're going to have another meeting tomorrow. For sure. I know. It's another one until March. Cool. We have the um, St. Valentine's Day uh, Gala to yes. go to for uh, education, the Education Foundation. We have our table. Yay. <laughs> so I brought my dress. It'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> Sold out. It's and it's sold, sold out. out. Yeah. Great. Good. Great. That's good to hear. Push them over the top today. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Is the whole thing sold out? Yeah. Wow. Perfect. It's a heavy ticket. Uh, PYDC. Um, Mrs. Burgess isn't here, but Dr. Um, yeah, we, we did talk about um, the content of what's in the minutes provided to you. Um, in our previous meeting. This is just uh, formalizes uh, the events of that day. But you can see um, it's a very active group and uh, we, we've made a lot of progress. And yeah, the next meeting is this Friday. This Friday. Yes. Yep. Okay. Reports uh, from the building committee. No meeting. No meeting. Mm. Wow, we're moving along here. <laughs> Mrs. Fry, any appointments, leaves of absence, resignations? Yes, um, we have eight um, coach and advisor appointments. We have two classified appointments, one short-term maternity leave, and one resignation. So. Good, thank you. And now the homeschooling plan approval. Yes, uh, Mr. Begley, I have one homeschool plan that has been re reviewed by Dr. Halpin's office and it does uh, meet the recommendations uh, that's set forth by school committee and by Dr. Halpin's office and I recommend approval. We have a motion. Sure, I move the recommendation of administration. Dr. Sorensen moves it. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Morgan seconds it. Any further discussion? Then all those in favor, please turn to your electronic school board. Very good. We found that out. And now we have the accounts payable warrant. Ms. Badger. Sorry, I'm being distracted. Um, our school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction summary report and warrant for review. I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the reports and accounts payable warrant S020917, dated February 9, 2017, in the amount of $1,208,951.78 as presented. Very good. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Ms. Hunt seconds it. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please vote on electronic school board. That's a good save. <laughs> Cut myself off. Very good. Thank you. Unanimous. Now we have the disposal of equipment and materials. Yes, tonight we have a number of uh, books from the Votex uh, School. Um, these, are, these are books that are um, no longer um, used or obsolete, and these will be donated uh, to an organization that will take um, these class sets. Very good. Um, do I have a motion? Ms. Badger? I move that we dispose of these books. And do I have a second? Mrs. Torselli seconds it. Any further discussion? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, please vote. Kind of a silly expression. All those in favor, please vote. Mm -hmm. Could vote either way. Right. <laughs> yeah, even if you're not in favor, please vote. I'll get the rhythm down yet mm -hmm. on this thing. It's okay. And we have one more now. Yes, tonight we have one more um, disposable uh, disposal of books and instructional materials request, and this is uh, for Plymouth South High School. And these are outdated tech books, um, and these. Uh, were approved for disposal on December 2016. They come to you tonight and they will be do donated to um, Big Hearted Books, which is another organization that does take um, 
that does take uh, books that we're looking at discarding. <coughs> they <coughs> recycle them and put them in different locations. But it's uh, a long list of, of uh, books. Very good. Do we have a motion? So move the recommendation. Moved by Dr. Sorensen. I need a second. Mr. Morgan seconds it. Any further discussion? Then please vote. Wow. Very good. Unanimous. That's done. And just want to note that we are way ahead of schedule tonight. Well, we good. stayed up late last night, so it's <laughs> pretty <laughs> Cranking it. All right. So then, without objection, we are adjourned at 823.